And this episode is all about custom brushes. So let's get right into it. All right, guys, welcome to this episode. My name is Jose Vega. I'm a concept artist at adojosevega.com. And in this channel, I like to share my tips and tricks with Photoshop in digital painting. Now, this week's episode is all about custom brushes. So I'm gonna be showing you guys a couple of ways that you guys can use to create your own custom brushes and expand your brush palette. So let's dive into it. So what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna divide the process of creating brushes in two parts. The first part is gonna be, it's gonna be your shape of the brush, okay? Now the second part is gonna be the behavior of that shape or your brush, okay? So let's start with this and this is gonna be this is usually what I have here and you can see there's a lot of, of brushes here but in, in reality what I use here are probably four five six brushes out of all this most of the time and I want to go through those brushes but I'm gonna be linking a, a, a link here on, on the description of this video for you guys to download all these brushes because I think brushes it's something that you have to experiment with and play around with throughout your journey as an artist and see what works for you in in, in the stuff that you're doing. So an, another key point is that my brushes not necessarily have to work for you. And I believe that your brushes are something that, that are personal to you because you use them in, in a way that only you know. So, you know, you might get all these brushes, but you, know, you might not really see any useful um, job for them. So you might just get rid of them or you can edit them or change them however you want. So that's, that's one of the first things that I want to say. Now, going through some of my simple brushes here that I, that I use, is the first one is going to be definitely this square brush. Now, the square brush, I pretty much changed it for the regular round brush in Photoshop. Uh, so I, I sometimes still use this, right? But most of the time I'm mostly using this part because it gives me a harder edge and, and a more squarey edge for things that I sometimes want to do better. So if I wanted to do like a building or, or a rock or something. I still have that really hard, um, sharper edge. Instead of using a round brush, and let's try this one instead of using a round brush and then trying to cut off those those corners from the from the um from the shape so if i were to do for example a a rock i were to do this something like that and this is the ground level right um this kind of looks to to round it, so I'll have to come in and cut, cut here, and try to pretty much clean it up, so I could actually make it look more like a rock. So with this one, it's gonna be a lot easier, just to create that sharper edge. That way, I don't have to. It's just a little bit faster for me to create that type of of shapes, right? But it all depends what you're doing. So that's why I use it the most. Now, another simple one is this one, which is just a regular round brush, like the one Photoshop brings and just squish it. And this one helps me create more, a lot of ground stuff. So like planes for the ground helps me a lot to make it just a little bit easier. And, and take advantage of that squish part and use it for 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 my ground planes here. All right, so that's those those two are really the the ones that are more basic that I use the most. Now for ones that are a little bit more texture, I have this one for example, which has a canvas texture. I got this a long time ago. I don't even remember when or where. But it has a very similar to a canvas type of texture. Get there. Um, another one that I use is this one, 91. And 
this was has a more noisy grainy texture for example you can use this one for skin for example for a really close up of skin it's very good um, but just to give a very noisy type of feel to to what you're painting is, is very good now the last one is going to be this one number 25 and this one has a harder edge on one side and a softer edge on the other side right and I most most of the time I use this for sketching so um, I can sketch I'll, I'll sketch with this one the most and sometimes I use it for rendering as well but um, it's just it's just very good it has a it has a very unique um, texture in there okay now how can we create these brushes so you guys remember the two part stages we have the shape first and then we have the behavior so let's just say I wanted to create a simple brush and the process is, is the same whether you want to do a texture brush or, or a more complicated shape um, um, brush or even a simple one like the square one that I went that I did so we're gonna create a very simple one like this one right so you guys can see the process and then you guys can you guys can play around with the same process creating other other simple things or other brushes for your for your palette so what I'm gonna do first is create a new layer because I want the shape of my brush in a separate layer and let's just say I'm actually gonna do a variation of this so let's say I don't want just a square I want to have like something something like this let's just have something like that that's gonna be my shape right let's just say you're happy with it and a lot of a lot of times creating brushes is very experimental so sometimes you can create abstract shapes like this and then edit the behavior over here later and you know a happy accident might happen and, and you get a super really cool brush that you can use for a lot of things so a lot of these things are, are trial, trial and error so this might not work but I just want to show you guys um, the process of, of creating the brush but let's just say you know you're happy with the shape here and what we're gonna do first is save the shape so then we can actually control the behavior of it what I'm gonna do is go to the layer that I created and I'm gonna press control my keyboard and you can see a little square that pops up when I press control over the square of the layer and I'm gonna click that's gonna select all my layers on all my pixels on that layer now we're gonna go to edit and we're gonna go to define brush preset and that's gonna bring this menu here and that's gonna help us save the shape so let's just put uh, square variation brush I'm gonna press OK, and that's already saved in my um, brush palette here. Now we already did part one, which is the shape, and now we're gonna do the behavior. So if I were to use this, it doesn't really, not really great, right? So, but we're gonna go over some of this stuff and see if we can make it a little bit better. Now the first one is going to be my brush tip shape. Brush tip shape is going to edit my tip shape and I can squish it a little bit. I can rotate it here. I can also bring some spacing in between my shape. Bring it closer together. What I'm going to do is like every time I do something here, I'm going to I'm going to test it out and see if it's behaving the way I want to. And I'm not going to change brushes because then I lose this if I don't save it. So I'm just going to see if I can do something here to squish this a little bit. That's cool. Alright, so let's just say this is what I want. Actually, I'm going to put that little square on the top side like that all right now next one is going to be my shape dynamics shape dynamics is going to have a couple options here but we're going to go cover just two of them here 
Now the size jitter is going to control the size of my brush and if you have it on pen pressure, the pen pressure is going to control the size. So if I make this pretty big, but I press really light, it's going to be very small. And then as I press harder, it's going to become bigger. You also have minimum diameter. Now the minimum diameter is going to affect how small it's going to be when you press the lightest. So if I bring this up and I do the same thing, so say I make it this big, and I press light, you can see it's not that thin, right? So you can control how minimum that diameter is going to be. But let's just say just a little bit smaller. That's good. All right. Now the next one is going to be your angle. Now your angle, you can play around with all this stuff, with all these options here. But let's just say you do initial direction. The initial direction is going to determine the angle of the brush. So on this one, I went a little bit down, and that's going to keep that angle with that initial direction. If I start going to the right, it's going to look a little bit different than if I go first down like that. So you can see a little bit of the difference there. But if I put, for example, direction, then that's going to change every time I change direction on the stroke here. Which gives it a little bit, diff a little different effect here. All right. So let's just keep it in initial direction just to test that out. And scattering is going to scatter my 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 shapes here, and that's going to make it go a little bit all over the place. Now scattering, it's um. It's pretty good for doing particles and stuff mixed with spacing. So if I were to do a lot of spacing here and a little bit of scattering, I can create, you can create like, like for example, this looks like fire sparks already, right? If I were to change this like that, you know, I can already have some fire sparks going like so. So this is, you know, scattering and, and spacing is really good for for particle effects and stuff like that. But we're not going to actually use it on this one. So we're just going to uncheck and I'm going to bring my spacing down. And let's test that out. That could be very simple. I'm going to go through some of the brushes in a minute. Dual brush is going to mix your brush with a uh, brush that you already have in your palette. In color dynamics, I actually use this a lot, but we're going to go over this whole option here um, in a different episode because I use this a lot when I go from black and white to color. We're going to go over that during that episode. And the last one is going to be all the dynamics. Now, all the dynamics is going to control the same way that shape dynamics control size and angle is going to control your opacity so if i put print pressure and i press really light it's going to have a lot of opacity and then more i press it's going to have less opacity right so it's going to control your opacity here all right so that's it pretty much about about this and that's what I use the most on here but feel free always to go through all this and just spend some time and experiment and, and see what works for you. And you can create brushes like for example this one this is just a, a character there and I can just put it there like if I had a let's just, let's just say for example I have a sketch here of, of some mountains here it's something very very simple here. Right, so say I wanted to add a character just to see how big this looks or well, the scale of this, you just pop that in. There you go. And you already know how big this hill is and the mountain and all that. So you can create you know brushes like that, or you can go very crazy and have a more abstract type of 
brush, for example, this one. You can have some really cool effects here. Here. That. You can create some really cool sound uh, sci-fi effects here with this or you know whatever you think works for you and um, so yeah so you know feel free to experiment with all this and and create your own brushes and, and just have your own personal um, brushes because those are the ones that are gonna work for you I really hope that you guys can now explore with making custom brushes and experiment with creating your own I'm gonna link my custom brushes in the description below so you guys can download it, play with them, edit them however you want. And if you have any custom brushes that you would like to share with the community, make sure that you leave them in the comment section as well. So if you have any comments or questions about what would you like to learn in Photoshop, let me know in the comments so I can actually address it in future videos. And if you like the content, feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, share it with your friends. I would appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming and I'll see you guys on the next one.